Hello again, my lovelies. Pirate Scum Gaming here, and tonight I'm bringing you a bit of a different build video. Tonight we are going to be taking a look at my Tier 5 Herogen Hunter Heavy Escort. And now the reason I'm doing this video is because there was a bit of a spirited di discussion going on in my fleet's Discord server regarding the viability of T5 ships in a T6 game. So I said to myself, Self, you have some T5 ships in your dry dock. You haven't flown them in a while. So what I did is I went on my Twitter account. I put up a poll, listed two ships that I thought would be best fit for the situation, and allowed you fine folks to vote on which one you wanted to see. And the winner of that poll was this ship. So I pulled it out, dusted it off, armed it up, X'd it up, took it out into an ISC, and the results were outstanding. I was not disappointed. Despite the fact that this ship had, does not have its own trait, it's a bare-bones T5 ship, no specialization seating, nothing fancy, this ship still performed exceedingly well. So let's go ahead and jump into the build. All right, like I said, nothing special. No specialization seating, no, does not have a trait of its own. So let's go and take a look and see what we got. We have the Disruptor Wide Angle Dual Heavy Beam Bank from your Discovery Reputation. This particular weapon does hit very, very hard. It's going to be the number one da source of damage on your parse. Next up, I have a Spiral Wave Disruptor Dual Beam Bank. This also hits very hard. It's one of the heaviest hitting disruptors in the game next to the Discovery Beam. And this does have a uh, built-in damage proc from the Spiral mod. And to get this particular weapon, you have to either have gotten yourself the Galor from the Cardassian Lockbox, or if you bought, bought the Vanguard Jem'Hadar Expansion Pack. That way it gives you the Galore and it also unlocks the Spiral Wave Disruptors. Next up is a bit of an older beam, the Coalition Disruptor Dual Beam Bank. I like this particular one because of its 2.5% chance to, for minus 20 disruptor resistance rating. So this particular beam is uh, debuffing your target against all disruptor attacks. And since this is a full disruptor build, this works well. Next up is your Dark Matter Quantum Torpedo from your Discovery Reputation. This is an all-around well-balanced torpedo. It hits very hard, especially when paired with chemocyte, which I'll be going over in a little bit. You can use this for torpedo boats. You can use this for beam boats. It works just as well in both ships. Now, also the reason we're using this is the dark matter dissolution. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Add a stack of dark matter dissolution, 174. 5.3 physical damage every one second for 20 seconds. Critical strikes add two stacks instead of 50, two stacks instead. 15% chance plus 10% crit severity buff to self for 15 seconds stacks up to three times. So that is a significant amount. And that is why this is a big hitter for a torpedo. Space core has not changed. I'm still using pretty much the same space core I generally use. I have the Elite Fleet Inter Intervention Protomatter Deflector from your Fleet Colony Holding. This is probably the uh, the meta deflector in the game right now for energy weapon builds as well as torpedo boats. It has some good it has some good stats. You get some hull capacity, which that uh, plays into something a little later. Starship shield capacity. Eh, shields don't mean much in this game. Starship Impulse Expertise improves speed and turn rate. That's important in combat. Also get some EPS Flow. Improves power transfer rate. That's important going for getting your weapons uh, back with the full power. Also Starship Drain Expertise. That's pretty much pretty self-explanatory there. That's really not what we're using it for. 
We are using it for the Starship Weapon Specialization Proofs Crit Hit Chance with Weapon. That is very, very important for this build. Also, Shield Pen. The sooner you get through your target shields, the sooner you're hitting the hull, the sooner they're dead. Also, we are using it for the Coal Crit Mod. That stands for Colony Crit, 15% uh, flat, 15% crit severity buff based upon hollow percentage, and 4% crit chance based on, also based on hull percentage. So the higher your hull, the more you're going to get benefit of this. Next up, you're using the prevailing innervated impulse engines from your competitive reputation. You're using this particular one. This is the tactical variant. So upon use of uh, special tactical firing modes, you get a massive speed and flight uh, increase. So basically, hit a beam, hit fire at will, beam overload, torpedo spread, and hold on to your teeth. Next up is I am using the for this particular build the mycelial harmonic matter and antimatter core from the Discovery Reputation. Now, I had considered using the Fleet Plasma one, but considering this ship does not have a lot of hull, I thought that giving a little bit extra hull regen and hull hit points was not a bad idea. So that's why we're using this core. Also, we're using Tilly's Review Pending Modified Shield. We are using this because your weapon attacks cause enemy shields to receive 11.5% increased damage for 10 seconds. And in an ISA, 10 seconds is forever. And also, this has a sit bonus, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. For the two, for the Stamets Tilly Field Modifications, I mean, we are using the two-piece, nothing is lost forever, plus 120% hull regeneration. So like I said, this ship does not have a lot of hull and it's very squishy, so this is essential for this build. Aft weapons, I am using the Trilithium Enhanced Omnidirectional Phaser Beam for its added haste proc, because as we all know, when you activate beam overload, your firing cycle slows down. So you need to re, uh, speed it back up again. That's where a lot of these haste buffs come in handy. And that's what's nice about this particular uh, beam array. It adds a bit of haste. Adds a 2.5% chance. Gain 10% firing cycle haste for energy weapons for 15 seconds. And that's not only good for beam overload. It's also good for uh, fire at will as well. Next up is just a standard, right off the exchange, or crafted, omnidirectional disruptor beam. And last but not least, we have the heavy biomolecular disruptor turret. I am using this because it hits a little bit harder than a standard turret. Also because 2.5% chance biomolecular in, in, uh, incubation. Good lord. Dunk stops working. Pull the cord start again. Minus 16.7 flight speed for 8 seconds. So you're going to slow your enemy down, make them easier to hit. Also, you're going to get, on expiration, you're also going to hit them with a good chunk of radiation damage. So, yeah, that's uh, this is nice. Now, I could have gone with the Trilithium Omni for the a little bit extra added haste. But since this was only a 4-3 and I didn't have an extra weapon slot up front for another Disruptor Beam, I chose this turn. Experimental Weapon, we're using the Soliton Wave Impeller. I've gone over this many, many times before. This comes from the Ryze T6 Ryzen Corvette. Is, um, you know, I know Augie said it before, and I'm beginning to believe him, that the Ryzeans are into some really shady stuff. And th these guys must have been war criminals in a past life. And, the, you know, the nice thing about this particular thing, it do this does not use uh, operate off of weapon power. This operates off of engine power. So the higher engine power, the faster this weapon fires. Devices, not much to talk about here. We have your energy amplifier, you have your active armor catalyst, and you have a Kobayashi Mu transponder for random buffs. For the universal slot, of course, we are using Lorca's custom fire controls. So let's go take a look at this. See, I am using the full three piece on this, so that's but that's just the beginning. 
So it automatically launches. You'll see just purple torpedoes shooting out everywhere. Automatically launch one dark matter quantum torpedo at enemies below 50% health. Max one torpedo per second. No more than one torpedo per enemy now. This particular thing does not fire, operate off of any special firing mode. So it's just one torpedo shooting at enemies that are below 50% health. And you see it going off quite a lot. All right, for, for Universal Consoles, we have the Dynamic Power Redistributor Module. This comes off of the T6 Atlas. This is one of the best consoles in the game. Also, one of the most expensive. The Atlas is not cheap, ladies and gentlemen. I happen to be able to get my hands on this particular console before the cost faction walls came down, and you could buy the, and the KDF characters could buy this on the exchange. So, if you got, if you really want this. I would use I would spend your event campaign that is running right now and get yourself the T6 Atlas. That way you get your hands on this. Its passives are good, plus 11.3 all damage resistance rating, 19% directed energy damage, but that is not what people use it for. They're using it for the active. To self for 20 seconds, plus 40% bonus damage. Well at while well above 80% hull. Plus well, 100 bonus damage resistance rating. And a massive, massive plus 500% hull regen. This is the ultimate oh shit button. So if you're taking a boatload of damage, you're just getting bent over backwards and bent over all kinds of ways by the enemy. Go ahead and activate this and you'll be able to outheal them. In most circumstances. I'm going to put that at... Uh, particular caveat in there. There's some circumstances where this will not save you. Next up is the temporal trajectory shifter from the Narendra or the Voral support cruiser. Its passives are, are eh, not, not using it for the passives for this instance. I'm using it for the active. Steel, weapon haste, defense, and cooldowns. This is an excellent console to use for any energy weapon build. Next up is the M6 computer. This comes off of the Tier 3 Temporal Escort. Again, this is a haste console. Self, tactical buff, 15% bonus all damage, 25% cooldown reduction in tactical bridge officer's abilities. That is important. There it is, that 20% firing cycle haste. That's the big that's the big boy. That's the main reason we're using it. Accuracy in defense. Eh, I mean accuracy is kind of important. You gotta be able to uh, hit what you're shooting at. Next up is Domino from the Bajoran Interceptor. Again, not so much for the passives, because I'm not running phasers. But we're using it for the active. 25% firing cycle haste, 25% bonus all damage. 25% recharge speed for bridge officer abilities, and 100% recharge speed for torpedoes. So when this is up, you're just firing torpedoes left, right, and center. Next up is the Immolating Phaser Land. This comes off of the Demos Pilot Escort. This also is not cheap. I was lucky to get my hands on this thanks to my very good friend, Augmented Dictator Games, who gifted me one of them. And this, uh, this is a very, very solid console to use it. That phaser lance hits like a runaway truck. I I am not disappointed with this in any stretch of the imagination. And the last but certainly not least, we have the Bio Neuron Fusion Circuits. This is one of the older consoles in the Lobby Store, and we're using it not only for the hull capacity, which that plays into something else I'm going to be talking about here shortly. Adds a little bit of control expertise, but also a Nice chunk of crit severity, 26.2%. And tactical consoles, these are all... I'm running four locators plus one exploiter because I don't know what I did with my, fi my fifth locator. I can't find it, so I just used what I had on hand. So let's go ahead and start looking at some uh, skills and specializations. Okay, here is my skill tree. This has not changed across any of the build videos I have done. So if you want to take a moment right now, go ahead and pause the video, take a screenshot. That way you can use this skill tree. It is a very good all-around skill tree to use. 
is one that Augie set up with, uh, for me some time ago, and he still uses this particular one. Specializations as always, Intel Primary, Temporal Operative Secondary. And now for some traits. Yes, I know the traits is a little messed up. Uh, the powers that be are aware of it, so we're just waiting on a fix at this point. But that does not stop me from doing this. So let's go ahead and take a look at my personal space traits. I have superior beam training. Everyone gets beam training, flat 5%. You can upgrade this at your K13 fleet holding to the 7.5%. Self-modulating fire, shield pen, pretty self-explanatory. Unconventional systems, using a control bridge officer ability gives minus 7% recharge on universal consoles. That's kind of important for this ship. Fragment of AI tech, 20% energy weapon damage based on control expertise. Adaptive offense. Crit chance that becomes plus crit severity during repeated crit hits. And believe you me, you're going to see me critting all over the place. Terran targeting, 15% crit severity. Not much to talk about here. Context is for kings. If you did take damage in the past second, plus 3 all damage resistance rating. If you did not take damage, plus 1% bonus all damage for 10 seconds. In a team with a proper tank, you are going to be getting that bonus all damage because you're not going to be taking a lot of heat. Intelligence Agent Attaché. Weapon Crit Strike. Restore 2% of Captain Ability Recharge. Also important. Fleet Coordinator. 2% bonus all damage per team member, self-included. So on a team of 5, that stacks up to 10%. And last but certainly not least, the Boimler effect. This is our primary means of cooldown. Before Boimler came along, we used to use Ox to Bat, which is still viable, but might I say. But Boimler effect basically frees up two bridge officer stations and three duty officers for one personal space trait slot. So yeah, the ends justify the means. Alright, Starship Traits. We are using Overpowered and Overgunned. This is from the Legendary Defiant. Universal Designs. This is from the Crossfield Refit, which I was gifted by a very good friend. When activating Universal... That friend being Augie, by the way. When activating a Universal Console, lasts for 20 seconds, stacks up to 5 times, 2% crit chance, 10% crit severity. That is what makes the Immolating Phaser Lance so powerful. The, lo the faster you can get it up, it has, now, now the Phaser Lance has f uh, 5 charges. So if it's constantly recharged, if it, the, if it recharges super fast using your universal, your unconventional system procs, you're going to have universal designs up quite often po quite possibly during the whole run so that's a lot of extra crit chance and a lot of extra crit severity going out emergency weapon cycle this comes off of the Kurak, arbiter or moragu if you're not using this for an energy weapon what's wrong with you this is an essential trait for energy weapon builds do not leave space dock without it Next up, Super Weapon Ingenuity. This is a beam overload, so that means I am using the extension trait. And I could go off into probably a good five minute bender about what irks me about this particular trait. I will save that for a video for the future. Basically, this, this is either a lobby ship or an exchange ship, not a sea store ship, like all the other extension traits. That That's what kind of irks me a little bit about this particular trait. Like I said, that's a discussion for another day. And last but not least, preferential targeting. After using beam fire at will or cannon scatter volley, plus 100% damage to beam overload or cannon rapid fire. And we're also using Terran Goodbye. When you defeat a foe, 25% accuracy rating. Eh. 
Now that 5% crit chance, that's what we use it for. It stacks up to five, three times, so that's 15% crit chance. Space Reputation, Tyler's Duality. And I remember when I was talking all about that all the hull capacity stuff and how it's important. This is why it's important. Plus crit chance based on hull capacity. Plus four sitting still, plus four point six percent crit chance based on hull capacity, max seven plus seven point five percent at two hundred uh, two hundred thousand hull. Now during combat, my hull will go up a little bit, so I will get even more bonus crit chance from this particular trait. Next up, advanced targeting systems. Oh yeah, this is discovery rep, by the way. Advanced targeting systems from the Dyson rep, plus 20% crit severity. Magnified firepower, plus all weapon damage. This comes from the Gamma reputation. Precision from the new Romulus rep, 5% crit chance. And also from the Dyson rep, tactical advantage. While your target health is less than 50%, plus 10 to plus 25 armor pen. As we all know, the faster we break through the armor, the faster we kill the enemy. Active space rep, not really much to talk about here. I do use a particular combo at the gateway. I use quantum, singular, quantum singularity manipulation. Anti-Time Entanglement Singularity, as well as Refracting Tetrion Cascade. I use those three in unison for the extra damage it causes to the gateway, as well as the spheres that have been grouped up on it. Stations. Like I said earlier, there are no specialty seats on this ship. This is a T5 ship. It doesn't have them. So I had to dig deep into my, in my great big bag of tricks to come up with a good solid build for this. And guess what? I did. In the Lieutenant U Lieutenant Universal, I made this a tactical seat. I have chemocyte laced weaponry one for the added radiation explosions. Because who doesn't like radiation explosions? Am I right? This works well in concert with the Dark Matter Quantum Torpedo. So it's very important to activate chemocyte before you activate torpedo spread. In the Ensign Universal Seat, I have a science station for jam targeting sensors, which is a control which helps proc un yeah, my tongue stops working. unconventional systems. Commander Tactical, distributed targeting, because I want to get my beam overload shots around. Cannon Scatter Volley to proc preferential targeting, as well as help out my turret in the back. Yeah, here we go, the main event, Beam Overload 3. And also, Attack Pattern Beta 3 for the debuff. Lieutenant Commander Engineering, I have Emergency Power Weapons 1 to proc Emergency Weapon Cycle. And the last two are Unconventional System Procs. These are the two only two Engineering Unconventional System Procs. We have Emit Unstable Warp Bubble, as well as Eject Warp Plasma. And for the Lieutenant Science Seat, again, unconventional system procs, tractor beam, and scarable sensors. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at duty officers. All right, we have 24 of 47, my security officer. Busy on Use of tactical abilities, 15% chance, set power levels to maximum for 5 seconds. And that does proc quite often. I am very surprised at how often that procs. And we have the Sulaban twins here for the chance for beam overload to cause all attacks against the targets to gain 35% shield pen. Because like I said, the sooner you break through the shields, the sooner you're hitting the hall, the sooner you're killing them. We have Zet, who is my projectile weapons officer. Chance for stacking crit severity buff on firing projectiles. We have Minkus, my other projectile weapon officer. Chance for stacking crit severity. Again, I'm, I'm pairing these up. And yes, these do stack. 
And last we have Dex, my third projectile weapon officer. Chance for stacking crit chance buff on firing projectiles. Now the reason I'm using the fire projectile one instead of the beam ones because the projectile ones proc more often. All right, so let's go ahead and take a quick visual tour of this ship. And answer your guys' question by now. No, this ship does not automatically come out of the box looking like this. I have the original Omega shield visual on this that's why it looks like it has teeth I thought that looked really cool it, this is probably one of the only ships I would use that vanity shield on because in my opinion it just makes this ship look just absolutely mean I mean you see this thing warping and coming at you you know you're in for a hell of a day all right so that pretty much covers the build portion of this video up next one of two ISCs. I say that because the first ISC that I'm going to show you is a standard ISC with, you know, the proper T6 tank and the rest of my team and T6 ships. Then after that one and its parse explanation, I am going to show you a all T5 ship ISC. Just to show you that, yes, T5 ships can own an ISC any day of the week. Alright, so stand by for that first ISC, and I'll catch you on the flip side.
Okay, we are back from that, I, that first ISC run. So let's go ahead and take a look at the parts for that. I am, of course, at James Bryce. T5 Herogen Heavy Hunt, Hunter Heavy Escort. 453.18k DPS. So I'd say a T5 ship definitely can hold its own in a T6 world. Coming along with me on this run is my very good friend Neo Jet Angel. He's a content creator and a mad space warlock. Uh, he does things with science that one should not be able to do. He is our controller for the run. Weighed in at 495.3k. Great job. We have Lord at Lord Ice. He is one of my tanking protégés. He tanked the run for us this evening. And looking at the stats, 78.78% damage in, 83% attacks in. You are you're doing very well, Lord Ice. You are doing very well. I'm extremely proud of you. You continue to impress me with your tanking stills. Keep up the good work. Also, we have at Talon, who came along in a damage roll. Came in at one just just a shade under 161k DPS. Great job, Talon. You're getting better by the day. I'm proud of you. And last but certainly not least, we have my at Mikey213 at Mad Dog Mikey Gaming. Another fellow content creator and also tanking student. Mikey ran support for this particular run. Great job, Mikey. And I encourage you guys to follow these content creators at Mad Dog Mikey Games at NeoJet Angel. These guys now put out some really good, great videos. They work really hard at it. Go over there, ring the bell so you know when they drop new videos, and smash that subscribe button like it owes you money. And tell them JB sent you. All right, so let's go a deeper dive into what I did. Okay. Disruptor, wide angle, dual heavy beam bank, overload 3, max 1 hit, 603.378. I was not lying when I said this is going to be your number one damage source. Solitone Wave Impeller also came in quite nice in this run. 161k. Coalition Dual Disruptor Beam Bank, 358.5k. Very good. Spiral Wave Disruptor Dual Beam Bank. I told you this thing hits hard. Came in just a shade over 397k. Also, Disruptor, Disruptor Array. This is the Disruptor Omni. Trilithium Enhanced Phaser Omni. This one also came in uh, pretty good. Just a very slim shade under 178. Dark Matter Lace Quantum Appeals Spread 2. 178k. Almost 179. Chemocyte. Almost 55k. These two are just absolutely deadly together. My turret even uh, did fairly well for itself. Not as good as, as a full scatter volley build, but still just about 47k. Not bad, not bad. Immolating phaser lands. Almost a little over 194k. Nice. Here's one of those Dark Matter Lace Quantum Torpedoes, the one from the uh, set bonus. This came in at 282.7, almost 283k on that just one hit. Distributed targeting, this did, uh, did okay. Not as good as I'd like it to, but yeah, it is what it is. Easy. These other things, they just continue to impress. They do very well for themselves. Even my Warp Plasma showed up for this run and uh, did very well for itself. And these are some pretty solid numbers from just a Bridge Officer ability that went for cooldown. My Warp Plasma was just doing all kinds of uh, business on its own. And the uh, uh, tongue stops working. The Anti-Time Entanglement Singularity did very well for itself as well. Got just a shade over 52k max one hit there. So yeah, I would, I would say overall, a T5 ship can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any T6 ship 
in the game right now. Properly built and flown, a T5 ship can do just fine, as you just saw. Now for this next ISC, you're gonna we did an all T5 ship, just to prove a point. So stand by for that particular ISC, and we'll catch you on the flip side for that one's parse explanation. See you then. And that is what we call T5 ships for the win. That was a great ISC run. Again, we know the players, same team as before. I am yours truly at James Bryce. Again, we have at Mikey213, at Neojet, Lord Ice, 
tanking the run for us. In a T5 tank, he was flying a T5 Decora. Total damage in 45. Total attacks in 51. That is a T5 ship without all the special bells and whistles that come with a T6 with a standard ISC heavy tank. That is a T6 T5 ship doing what it does. And that is not bad at all. That is not bad at all. Great job, Lord Ice. You got you you nailed it. Neogen here is also running a form of a kind of a uh, off tank, really. So he picked up quite a bit. He did pretty good for himself there. Good job, Neogen. I'm proud of you on that one. Mikey doing his bang up job as usual. Talon also doing very well. Coming in at just a shade over 154k in a T5 ship. Very well, Talon. I'm proud of you. And me. Damn near close to 469k. Yeah, that's a T5 ship and an all T5 ship run. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, it just goes to show you that T5 ships, yes, they are still very viable in this game. I would fly a T5 ship more often. I mean, I, I like my T6, T6 ships out of all the bells and whistles. They're nice. They're pretty. But sometimes you just got to get a little down and dirty and dig out a T5 ship and go to work. So let me just take a look at the player combat analysis for me and see what I did. Okay, once again, Disruptor, Wide Angle, Dual Heavy Beam Bank. Still the big hitter on the block. For almost a little over 494k, max one hit. Again, goes to show you that, yes, this is this particular weapon will always be the number one hitting weapon on a beam overload build. Coalition did very well for itself, as did the Spiral Wave, Solid Town Wave Impeller, Standard Disruptor, Trilithium uh, Omni, Torpedo Spread, Himalayan Phase Lance really did went to work here. Wow, that's a, that's the best one I've seen yet for me. Kima, of course, Kimisite Willis Weaponry, again, doing a very good job. Here's the uh, Dark Matter Lace Torpedo, that came in good. So yeah, all good numbers on an all-T5 run. I, like I said, I was not disappointed with the end results of, of this ship challenge. So final thoughts? Yeah, if you're still flying a T5 ship, you build it right, you exit up, you got yourself an endgame ship. Caveat, no, it's not going to break any records. It's not going to be a million plus run in a T5 ship. I just don't see that happening. I'm brutally honest with that. That will require a T6 ship with all the bells and whistles, yada, yada, yada. But still, you can still go into any ISC and be competitive in a T5 ship. And these parses prove it. So that being said, thank you for watching. And remember to do all the YouTube stuff. Hit the like button, subscribe, yada, yada, yada. I'm sure you're sick of hearing it by now. But you know what? It helps the YouTube algorithm. It helps, helps YouTube realize that I exist. So I appreciate it. And with that being said, as we always say here, don't go by the book. Think like a pirate. And I'll catch you next time. Human! Play, Tom Jot, human!